I just got a new digital camera and it's so complicated. I mean, what do all these dials and buttons do? I just want to take a picture. Wait, I'm going to go and get my iPhone. Bridge cameras and DSLRs are a lot more complicated than your iPhone was. But the good news is that we're going to walk you through how to use all these settings. Not only that, once you learn how to use a few of these settings, you're not even going to need to use things like night pictures, action pictures. You're just going to set your camera yourself so it'll do what you want to do. Our first assignment is to use the camera's manual mode to take a properly exposed picture and also to take one that's underexposed and overexposed. A properly exposed picture is simply one that's neither too light nor too dark. Fortunately, exposure is fairly easy and is composed of just three components. The first component is the camera's ISO setting. These don't have to be in any particular order. However, I generally set my ISO before I set the other two components of exposure. ISO simply sets the camera's sensitivity to light. A higher ISO means that the camera's more, more sensitive to light. A lower ISO means that it's less sensitive to light. Our next component is the camera's aperture or the actual lens opening that lets in the light. A larger aperture means that more light gets in in a given amount of time. A smaller aperture means that less light gets in in a given amount of time. And our final component of exposure is shutter speed. Shutter speed is simply the amount of time that the camera's lens stays open when you snap the picture. For most pictures, this is just a small fraction of a second. These three components are related in that if you want to take a properly exposed picture and you change one of them, it means that you're going to have to also change at least one other of them. Each of these components of exposure has an effect on the type of picture that you take. For example, if you use a fast shutter speed, you can freeze action. And if you use a slow shutter speed, you're likely to get some blur if you take pictures of a moving object. But let's wait till our next segment before we talk about the effects of ISO aperture and shutter speed. Let's just figure out how to take a properly exposed picture first. To understand a little bit more about the relationship, let's watch this demonstration. Let's say a properly exposed picture is like a full glass of water. The water represents light. You can see I can open up this valve back in my sink so that the water runs very quickly, or I can stop it down, as we would say in photography, so it runs very slowly. So the valve that lets that water in and controls its flow is like our camera's aperture. If I open the aperture all the way, the water runs very quickly, and this glass of water will fill very quickly. That's like our camera's shutter speed. If I just open the aperture a little bit and let the water drip, it's going to take a long time, or we're going to have to let that sensor be exposed to light for a lot longer than we did with the aperture wide open. So right now, our shutter has to be open a long time in order to properly expose this picture or, pull the, or fill the glass. But there's another trick we can use. We can simply 
and make the glass smaller. And now, although it's still going to take a long time to fill this glass, it's going to take a lot less time than it did with that bigger glass. So what I did just now is I changed the ISO setting and I'm using a higher ISO. The ISO changes the camera's sensor's sensitivity to light.